Hey folks, Ben Gilbert here from Engadget, and we are here at E3 2014 speaking with the fine folks from Oculus VR, uh, the people behind the Oculus Rift headset, and uh, you guys are making a VR headset and other stuff. So let's talk about other stuff, because you guys are here to talk about games, right? Yep. Uh, so first things first, you guys hired Jason Rubin to head up your first party development stuff, and none of your first party development stuff is here. Yep. What's that about? So Jason just joined, Jason Rubin just joined, uh, co-founder of Naughty Dog, right. and he is going to be our head of Worldwide Studios. And so really what Jason's going to be focused on is growing out and building those teams. We do have some of those teams kind of running internally, and we are trying to get them aligned in terms of like building really cohesive, sort of incredible VR experiences. Sure. And so Jason's going to be heading that up from both a production standpoint and sort of a team building standpoint as we sort of pull together, as we have been trying to do, the best people in the industry to build um, brand new experiences. You kind of answered your own question. We just hired Jason. <laughs> You're not showing it here at E3. It's like, well, yes, those would go hand in hand. Yeah, well, I mean, you've, yeah. presumably, you've been developing something internally before this. Well, we, we been, have. We've been developing, trying to figure out what works well in VR, I think, more than, like, we... We haven't had the long going effort to say we're going to make this one specific piece of first party content. It's right. been trying everything that works, and you can't do that if you're dedicated yourself to making a certain game. And now we're getting to the point where we have a pretty good idea of what works. So Jason's going to be really instrumental in, like they said, bringing all those teams together and making a real first party content push. Games. There are games here. Alien, that is, that is a game. Alien, Alien Isolation. Isolation. Yes. Uh, and uh, Lucky's Tale. Yeah. And uh, Super Hot. We just played all these games yep. just a moment ago. And and when, I mean, when can anybody expect to play this stuff, right? Like, if I, I have a dev kit, so I can play it whenever, right? But I'm not a normal person. I am a weird journalist who happens to have a dev kit. Easy. So for uh, all the experiences we're showing here, we're built using the pilot run units mm -hmm. uh, of the second development kit, which is still what we're showing. So as far as consumers go, they can always dive in and grab second development kit, although you shouldn't. You Not should wait for the consumer well, version. And also, some of these software isn't released also. That's right. true. So if they exactly. can grab it, they're not going to be playing it either. And Absolutely. And then that comes back to be more of a question of asking the devs than, than us. Yeah. Like, I don't know when you can play Lucky's Tale or when you can play Super Hot or when you can play Valkyrie or when you can play... Alien Isolation and the Rift. In terms of other stuff, mobile SDK. Yes. I want to talk to you guys about the mobile SDK because the last time I talked to John was in, I think it was last year, yep. at the NVIDIA thing that they mm -hmm. did in Montreal. Uh, and he was talking a little bit about his work on that and whatever else, but where is that going? Yeah, so John and uh, the team, especially the team in Dallas and, and the team in Irvine, has been really focused on polishing that mobile SDK on Android to deliver a really high quality of experience that comes pretty close to the experience that we can achieve on PC. They're definitely different for a lot of different reasons, but we it's taken us a while to get to the, the quality of experience that we've wanted. So it is in the hands of quite a few developers who are messing around with it, giving, a, giving us a ton of feedback, sort of experimenting with what's possible and uh, what works well on mobile sure. devices. Sure. And we don't have a release date for it quite yet for the public, but it is something, again, that we committed to in the Kickstarter, and we still intend to fulfill that promise. It's just... Mobile, without, you know, there is a significant, uh, significantly less processing power, and so it's taking us a little bit longer to get it right and optimizing around Android. So it looks like we're going to see that stuff first, though. It looks like the mobile SDK stuff, we're going to see the fruition of that stuff before we see the Oculus headset. Is that smart? I think you'll see the... I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, I, I think you're going to see the mobile <laughs> SDK launch publicly before the, the Consumer Rift comes out. So and at the very least, what we have some developers doing is... Um, experimenting with some high-end Android devices today mm -hmm. and building experiences and sort of seeing what's possible. You know, as soon as the, the mobile SDK ships, I think you'll start to see, publicly, I think you'll start seeing stuff that people like you and enthusiasts can start experimenting with and trying out for yourself. But not consumers, necessarily. Mm, we will see. So, in the same no way comment that on the Samsung VR headset that is supposed to be happening this year running on Samsung devices using the mobile SDK and software powered by Oculus. No comment on that. Okay. From you, sir. We don't comment on rumors or speculation. Indeed. I think I asked you this before, but in terms of I am a consumer, I want to use this, and I actually, you know, I, I'm interested in Oculus. I've been reading about it for a few years. When am I going to ever use this stuff, right? Like, I, I don't want to be Wait, like, when is it coming out? For a few years. For a few years. When did the company start? 2012? That's well, right. I, I think it started. Less than two years ago. <laughs> Is it less than two years ago? Yes. But it was you. Were, the the first headset with Carmack was pre-company, 
So it we've was. been covering this before Oculus was a company. That is true. You have been covering it for about two years. Exactly. In a week. That's a few years. Yeah. That's a couple, a couple of, years. of years. Okay. Let's let's get semantic arguments. You're right. Sure. Though. Gamers expect they see a game at E3. They expect it to be out the next year, right? So Definitely. I think that that's part of the well, we operate perception differently situation. than a lot of companies. Most companies, you wouldn't even see our product at this point. It would be sure. still secret. It'd still be under a heavy NDA, and nobody would find out about it until probably months from now. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but we, we've just been open with that whole process along the way. And that means that when you show up at E3, it's not necessarily because you're ready to unveil everything. It's because it's just part of the, sure. you know, yeah. part, part of showing people what you're up to. The big focus for us um, has really been on nailing the hardware side, which we have you know changed our consumer spec a few times as we've learned more and more and had different breakthroughs. Sure. And at the end of the day, you know we want Oculus to be the premier platform for VR games, hands down, bar none. And it's going to take us a little, it has taken us a little bit sure, longer sure, sure. Um, to get there. But I think that, you know, people will be excited when they see the consumer version of the Rift. The other big thing for us has been content. And that's been a challenge, you know, especially we talked before um, about sort of a release date and how, sure. how, how even developers talk about the release right, date for their right, right. games. It becomes a marketing situation. Exactly. Yeah, that's so true. building out a great content library um, is taking us a little bit longer than we would love. But the community is doing an amazing job. We're well, I wouldn't putting... say longer than we've expected. No. It would be hard. Yeah, exactly. Um, but the community is doing awesome, and we're going to invest really heavily first party. And I think, you know, as we bring it all together, people will be really excited. Is Oculus developing any hardware other than the Rift? Yes. Yes. What? That's, I guess, we the last question. We don't rumors. <laughs> 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 that a rumor speculation. You just said yes. I mean, so let's... <laughs> I was speculating. <laughs> So <laughs> Oculus is focused, like we just said, on delivering the entire VR experience. Right? We want to sure. be the best VR platform. That starts with the Rift, but there's really basic needs. And one thing we've talked about a lot, which can be sort of our scapegoat for this one, is like the need for great audio and how that's integrated into the Rift, what we allow users to do, what we're shipping, what the SDK looks like. Sure. Does audio fit into that whole pipeline? Control methods, it, for instance. Input is important. Devices. But VR is one of those things where the reason we uh, opened up the R&D team with, with Abrash and Ottman heading that up is because to, to, get, to get to the holodeck, we've still got a long way to sure. go. And people want the holodeck, and we want to be able to deliver that and have that incredible experience for games. Sure. Um, there's breakthroughs that need to be made across multiple disciplines here to get there, and we're investing super heavily in R&D, and I think, like you've seen, recruiting, again, the best and brightest from sure. across the industry. That's to, been the tale of the past six months, is to, hiring to, up all these people. To make those yeah. breakthroughs happen. Sure. So, even though we haven't announced any, uh, any new hardware products yet, we're investing incredibly heavily into delivering you know, the holodeck at the end of the day. Right. And it's worth pointing out that these aren't all necessarily far off distant future things. Not at all. All right, well, do you want to talk about Smash Brothers? Oh man, I'm so excited about Smash Brothers. <laughs> Me too. I, I believe it's going to be the best Super Smash Brothers game of all time. Fantastic. I'm so happy about Nintendo really showing that they care about the tournament community. Like, you know, with the Nokia Theater thing and with sure. the Smash Fest thing they're doing at Best Buy and We're going to be playing getting rid of Trip. It's That's the right thing to do, by the way. We is. could just talk about that for another 10 minutes. <laughs> but we're going to end this here. Thank you very much, gentlemen. It's really good to know that Oculus has really good people in charge to you know invest in contents and bring you know great VR contents mm -hmm. so that help us